What are you working on there? Well, all these scraps from the flanking. Yeah. We're salvaging them to, to make all these other pieces. This is the new drawer. No, this is the, the old, old drawer. drawer that got redone by Doug. Yeah, it's all coming apart. And it was like, oh, I don't want to make another of these. So we were able to... Um, Look at how beautiful it came out. Yeah. So you relaminated the bottom. Now these doors, much like a lot of them, were just dried out and delaminating. Okay. So we're going to pry these open. The shelf will be below that and the water heater will be sitting underneath that shelf. So ah, okay. For Renee, we're going to laminate, we're going to take off the this uh, formica. Noise making. That's good. Noise is good. What are you working on there? Well, all these scraps from the flanking. Yeah. We're salvaging them to, to make all these other pieces. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. Nice. That's what we're doing today. We're making cockpit place and uh, oh. <laughs> Lots of Where stuff. Where do you want to start? <laughs> Just a bunch of little stuff. Little stuff. That's the name of the game. Okay. Fine. All right, John. Good, good to see you. you. Good to see you. This is the new drawer. No, this is the, the old, old drawer. drawer that got redone by Doug. Yeah, it's all coming apart. And it was like, oh, I don't want to make another of these. So we were able to. Um, Look at how beautiful it came out. Yeah. So you relaminated the bottom. Nice. This is the old bottom. Yeah. <laughs> bottom rust. It was from uh, Masonite. And it was like, really? So we had to take the bottom out anyway to get the drawer apart. So while we had it out, we went, I can't put this back in the boat. So now, so that's the that was cut from the new piece of formica. Yeah, yeah. The fascia below the galley stove. This just peeled off with her bare yeah. hands almost. This is the fascia below the galley. Yeah, this is the formica that was on it. Yeah, it was chipped in the corners. Okay, Let's delaminating. See. Yeah. I mean, so much of this stuff is about delaminating. Yeah. Rot, coming apart, mildew, sure. mold. This is the galley drawer, and it was coming apart. This is the old bottom, and it was getting pretty funky. So we had to take it completely apart and uh, make a new bottom for Micah for both sides and re-glue everything back together. And then we cleaned up the dividers and sealed them with Smiths. And uh, this part here was busted off. <laughs> and uh, so we decided to just repair this instead of making That's a great, new one. Because you know we want to keep as many of the old pieces and just fix them up. So you mentioned something about the difference between the metric width and uh... yeah, like this plant, this masonite, I guess we'll call it, is a uh, I think four millimeter or something. And what we had was only three or so. So we glued for micro both sides to bring us up to that thickness. Oh, plus, there's a piece on the outside and one on the inside. Yeah, plus, by gluing it both sides, minutes to glue it as opposed to sealing this, priming it, painting it, you know what I mean? Now there is still a little bit of damage. Oh yeah, well that's, that was long gone. Yeah. There's actually a little rot there and the piece just fell out. Well, in the galley, uh, throughout the boat, uh, as we progress, you know, stuff like this, you know, this it's delaminating, it's got some mold on it, it's starting to rot, yep. and uh, pieces just falling off. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so, and this is the fascia, that was the fascia, that the shelves in the galley and below the stove, this is here. Okay. Well, we can almost peel this off by hand. So what we just did this morning is we made a new one of those, improved one of those. And the, and the fascia, we were able to save the wooden part. Okay. So we've glued up, instead of that being a painted shelf, we, we've made a new shelf. It's 
going to have a Formica top. Okay. So it'll be a lot cleaner, waterproof. And this is the fascia we were able to salvage. So new Formica on the outside of it. The bulkhead itself, we're still debating whether to replace it or repair it. And it's oh, no. I know, I know. It's over here. This can be, we can cut out because that doesn't, that's not necessary. But the whole thing is delaminating. Where is this? This is the bulkhead that supports the stove. Oh, the one between the stove and the fridge. Yeah. And we've got mold down here, delamination and rot. See it? Okay. And the same old story. Do you spend X number of hours trying to fix this thing? or it becomes a pattern. You see that piece over there that's over half a sheet of plywood? Right. We glued that up about two or three weeks ago just for stuff like this. So we can, just to have ready to cut? Yeah, so we can lay this on well, that there. Doesn't, yeah, that looks like you could just use that as a pattern for a new one. Right, but here's the problem. All these cleats on this side have to end up dead on for the uh, refrigerator supports which is no big deal. We can make uh, jigs for this in, in not too much time. This is the refri refrigerator fascia part of the galley. Yes. And these measurements, this the old drawer goes in here. Okay. These measurements, we had no room to spare. And uh, so all of this cutouts and everything are very critical. This is the upper shelf that will support the drawers, the drawer. The drawer slides in here. Okay. These cleats, when you slide the refrigerator in, they, these keep it, the, these and, this, and the matching pair on the bottom shelf, keep the refrigerator from moving fore and aft. Okay. Okay. This piece, the refrigerator just touches this. This is on the outboard side, so if the boat's heeled over to port, it'll have the support of this, plus this cleat, when it's screwed down, clamps onto the refrigerator. Okay. In addition to that, the feet sit in these detents, little rubber feet. Yeah. So that's your first line of defense there. Those, they won't squeak and rattle around. It locks right in. And then, of course, the final thing is the fascia is screwed on, that flange that goes over the outside of the fascia. Right. So it's supported up and down, fore and aft, and side to side. That's good. So was this? These were not there before. Huh? These are all no. new pieces. Oh yeah, yeah. These are all new pieces. Well, the new had to design. Yeah, the new fridge and and uh, nothing in there worked for us anymore. So we just had to go with all new. And it's fine. The reason for these cutouts is mainly air ventilation. Okay. Just while we were laying them out too, it was handy to have this hole in to reach under and mark the cleats. When you open this door, it'll, it, the hull is way down here. So you have a nice deep area for stuff. And in about, no, not sweaters. You don't want that near the hull. Uh, tools, spare parts, oil filters, okay. stuff you don't use much. Stuff like that that you don't keep in a stateroom. <laughs> Shoes. Shoes, there you go. And then about halfway up, we're gonna put a little shelf with a, with a rail on it for whatever. Okay. So you'll gain we we'll actually gained some storage place, space from that closet area. Well, we lost a closet. We're just eating yeah, sort of. It was a walk-through. No, it was just a closet. You Couldn't could you? walk through it, but you, you could. Nobody, nobody ever did. 
No. 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 Only no. if it was really raining or something. Yeah. yeah. So that's what. Okay, now, so that's what that's what that's all about. Now these doors, much like a lot of them, were just dried out and delaminating. Okay. So we're going to pry these open. Take the screws out, pry it open, and glue it back down on the bench so it's flat. Okay. And both that way. They're you just. Delamining, but fortunately we can get, get them apart. The itself is good. We're filling up with parts. Yeah, so here's all the, the doors newly varnished. <laughs> and, and this is the door that goes to the engine behind the um, ladder. Yeah. And so we changed from that dark varnish to white. Ah, very nice. So now that cave will brighten it up a lot. So that is, uh, that's just painted over the varnish? Yeah, we stripped it. Hey, no, it looks nice with the, mm -hmm. with the white face. Well, underneath the ladder, you know, the steps will yeah. be, you know, it'll brighter. Be brighter and the boat will look a lot bigger. It won't, it won't be so dark in there. And these are all the various rails and stuff that we've refinished. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, deck, under, under decking? Yeah, what are the, oh, these are the new shelves we made for the little cabinets. Which cabinet? In the saloon. Okay. There's one port and starboard. Just little yeah. shelves halfway up in the lockers. Nice. So those are all done. In. Yeah. Great. And then uh, these are the new cockpit doors. Clint. Young man. Hello. How are you, buddy? Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. Good. How you doing? Great. And these are the new cockpit doors. Ah, very nice. Um, so we're building up some varnish on it. We got a couple. They don't look that much thicker. I mean, that much deeper. That much what? That much taller. It's amazing. Inch and a half or something? Yeah, and then we put the edge band on there. So, I mean, I just put my leg over there. I can totally. And what are they it. made out of? Uh, marine ply. Marine ply, okay. Just like the old ones. Yeah, an inch and a half doesn't sound like much. Okay. <laughs> but when it's on the top of only this much space and you go like that, it's large. Okay. Myths? Okay. Look at the laminates in this thing. That's how many you had? Oh, it's beautiful stuff. And of course you saturate that with Smith's and then with each coat as you sand it with the varnish, you, you just keep building it up. And of course in the holes where the screws go, mm -hmm. you just pour the Smith's in there so that it seals them. Yes. Ah. Underneath where the old battery control is. Yeah, it'll set, there'll be a shelf down underneath this where the batteries go, and there'll be another shelf down there, and a water heater will go back up under there. So the water heater's going to go on that shelf? No. That's oh, sorry. Where the, that's where your engine battery oh, okay. still is going to go back there where it was. Right. But the shelf will be below that, and the water heater will be sitting underneath that shelf. So ah, okay. In that square there. Okay. <coughs> How much does that thing weigh? I mean, you can Not that walk much. away with it right now, but it's going to have six gallons of water in it. So. Yeah, yeah. 50 pounds. I mean, not enough to worry So about. it always has uh, wa some water in it. It's always full. It's always full. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And it's heated by shore power or by the engine. So when your engine's running, you motor over to the islands, you got hot water when you get to the island. The battery charger battery charger circuit breakers and then the galvanic isolator and what is a galvanic isolator well the one thing your boat has common with every other boat in the harbor and with the, the docks and everything is the green wire on the shore power the safety ground so if there's a problem on a boat next to yours it can come on your boat through the green wire 
Right, because it's a common. So the galvanic isolator essentially is diodes in the green wire of the 110. So any problem on the dock or on another boat on the dock can't come on your boat. Wow. Right. So your zinc won't be protecting their problem. <laughs> nice, so, nice. Yeah. If you look on the down low and look outboard and forward, that's the, where the, the new inverter location. Okay, beautiful. New inverter, all new wiring. Mm -hmm. All new wiring. Yeah. And uh, I tried to salvage uh, some of your old battery cabling. Yeah. Uh, I was able to salvage a couple pieces. I was surprised most of it was really corroded. Yeah. And I didn't feel comfortable putting the old yeah. wire in there. I mean, it's both the tin copper looks like silver when you strip back the wire. Right. And this was gray. Okay. So it was like, it's, all, mm -hmm. it's, all, yeah. Yeah. it's had water yeah. penetration. Some batteries are in right. here. The house battery, the batteries themselves for the house bank will be here and then two more outboard here. Okay. Okay, so there'll be six total of those. The engine battery will be mounted on that shelf in the cockpit locker. This switch will control right. both the engine and the house battery. Beautiful. And then this switch will isolate the inverter. Okay. We'll need instructions on all of that. Well, you, you'll get all that. Yeah. And, uh, and then down here you have the blocks for all your battery cabling. You got the fuse for the inverter down under here. But as opposed to being, you know, they had most of it up in that one locker that was over here before, but those stuff scattered all over. Now everything's going to be pretty much in one place. Nice. The same way with the panel. Okay. Originally, with the old electrical panel there was all the 12 volt stuff. Mm -hmm. The 110 stuff was out in that cockpit locker. So if you wanted to turn on something 110, you had to climb out of the boat up the cockpit locker. Now everything's right here. It'll look a little confusing at the moment because I've just run all the wire in here and sure. haven't connected anything yet. But it's all run. Ah, well, not all of it, but a yeah. lot, a lot of it. Down here, this is where all the battery cabling runs and comes back along there. Here's <coughs> for the alternator output. And there was the battery cable. I'm just making some blocks to re-glue these panels back in the doors. Okay. Uh, that one's not as bad as this one, but it's bad enough to where we need to... So you're getting them all off, completely off? Yeah. Taking them all off and re-glue them from the start. Just the glue just died of old age, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, yes. so that's great. we'll glue those. You want to put back on old doors that are all falling apart. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't make no. sense to deal with that, so... We had to do... And so now you're going to make blocks for the gluing process? Something yeah. Uh -huh. Just gets close or it has to be exact? Just close, like a quarter inch around. Okay. Because we have cleanup to do once we glue them. Yeah. You don't want to glue the gluing block. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let me just rip this. So you don't just glue the clamps? Yeah, but you got to make these big blocks to spread the... Spread the pressure. Yeah, evenly. Um, so all these old scraps of this half inch marine ply, we just use it for uh, various projects, including gluing blocks. All right, here we go. That's good plywood. That looks like nice plywood, yeah, wow. Made in Texas. You can feel the little edges in the corners are lifting. This is good here, but it's the same old story. But it's lifting here and there. So you want to try to get it completely off? Yeah. Instead of just trying to force the glue down there and... Oh, that didn't happen. No? Well, it's stuck in here, but this is not stuck. Yeah. Along here. Oh, I see. Stuck here. So it's just stuck in the middle. Can you apply heat or? Mm, no, just on the wood. Just a varnish on the other side. Yeah, if you just wedge it, the glue will slowly let go. I can hear it crack, creaking. Oh, it's cracking right there. Of course, you know, it holds on just good enough. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. But the good thing is we don't have to make any panel for this one. It doesn't crack. That's all. No, it's plywood. It shouldn't. 
Oh, is that it? Pretty cool. Okay, so the one thing Renee really wanted to do was do something special with this bulkhead here, which is full of holes, as you can see from all the previous gear, cracked. And we pretty much thought it was not even possible to change it, just clean it up. But now, for Renee, we're gonna laminate, we're gonna take off the this uh, formica. This right here. So Clint and Doug think we can take it off. So we just oh wow look at that we just put some heat to it with the heat gun right and we just start peeling it off so this is cut to here and cut to right here you can see you have to take this off right up there oh, you think it'll just come off <clears throat> I might be able to get it out okay the metal will come off the trim here is gonna the metal come frame off. you already had off so you've put that back on yeah I put it back on so so that looks good um, so you think we can just take off this whole this yeah. whole piece. Yeah, it's gonna come off and then where's the seam at? And we're gonna seam yeah. up there. And then same with this here. Take it down, just right down. Take it to down the, right there. <laughs> to the uh, cleat, whatever yeah, it's called. wherever it is right here, take it out. <clears throat> Nothing below that cleat will come out. We'll relaminate as we plank, like we've been doing on all the bulkheads. Well, it would look, it'll look amazing. We just, we went down low. It was already delaminated on the bottom, as you can see. Right here. Right. So we just start putting some heat to it, and you can see back in there. Wow. You just gotta do it real slow, and it comes okay, off. Just chip rip. it off. Just no. basically take it off section at a time. No, I'll no. just put heat to it. Take the metal off here, and just start peeling it back. Ooh. Just pe start peeling it. Back. Yeah, and this right here will come out when the trim's off. Sure. That's just, a... You don't want to yank it off because it'll pull a layer of the plywood off, maybe. Or okay. Yeah. Just kind of do it real slow yeah. and get it off. It's like peeling then... a label off a yeah. off of something. Oh, yeah. This is a new cabinet, or at least a fixed up cabinet? Yeah, we just got it all prepped and painted the bottoms, so the bottoms are white you now. Nice. nice. <clears throat> it's not gonna be a cave anymore in there. Gotcha, you're right, those bottoms are all kind of a brown color. Yeah, they're or red, yeah, red, dark brown. <laughs> so that looks nice. And these are gonna get replaced right here, in between. Okay, let's see. This oh, you see, that's, that was the kind of the way it was before. Yeah, right? this was that old Formica that they had on there, I mean. It was a wood grain for mica. Yeah. That's all it was. Oh, look at that. Beautiful wood grain for mica. <laughs> I think there's a grain in there. There was a grain, yeah, I can see wood <laughs> grain. Kind of a... So these have been sanded and prepped. We're just gonna... So what are we gonna put on top here? Do white get for mica? White for mica right here. Gotcha. That's now, gonna... do you need to take that frame out, or is that solid now, and it looks solid? No, that stains. That stays. That's in there, right? Yeah. That's okay, so stay. you'll glue the formica in place right here? Yeah. We'll just glue it right to it. Boom. Okay. Same with the starboard side over and here. And this one's done as well, basically? Yeah, this one painted also. Beautiful. And the switch has been reinstalled. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> Starting to clean up, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, over here is the chart. This is the ch new chart table area where the f refrigerator is going to go in there. Slash the refrigerator, refrigerator, yeah. yeah. Uh, workstation. This is going to be the workstation. Guys, it's coming together. We're going to... Um, this old thing right here. Yeah. Can't really tell, but it's uh. It looks it's, just, it's in really bad condition. If you look, I can from, see it. If you I get down low it. and look, it's just completely yeah wonky. We're gonna, we're gonna move it. Blow it inboard. Okay. We're gonna yeah. make a new one. Move, and move it, it right to there. Move it inboard. It's not. It's not <clears> structural <throat> at all, right? No. 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 Huh. And this right here, we're gonna we're gonna shorten this. That way we open have, this whole thing up. That way the hatch is open nicely for the. Oh, okay, the cool. Regions. This. <laughs> the Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> so here is the, the front fascia. Let's take a look at the. So okay. We don't, want, we don't care about the back because that was going to be ceiling pipes anyway. Well, this. Uh, what was it? <clears throat> this was the top, wasn't it? No, no, this no, no. was the part yeah, that, was the top. that went out in the hole. This is a piece you removed when the termite droppings fell out a year and a half ago, okay. which started all this stuff. Because it was masonite, and it, once again, see it, it cut the air off, completely cut the air off to the underside of the hull. Right. Must have had a tiny deck leak there, which wasn't detected because it was landing here. 
termites love wet wood. And that's what we found about a year and a half ago above the galley. And that's this piece. <clears throat> it went up against the deck beam. You see here? This was the upside. It's very warped and falling apart. So, <laughs> delaminating um, once yeah, again. Yeah, it was delaminating, yeah. And uh, so. But look how lovely it is with the little frame around the wood around here. Oh, it's very lovely. Yes. <laughs> we have a couple options. We're not, and one of them is not trying to restore this once again. Well, again, the front, this piece here, obviously, that's de becoming delaminated, but mm -hmm. is the, the wood that actually, you know. I believe this is original construction. See this? Yeah. I think Giovanni, or whoever he was, did a lot of work on this. Now, <clears throat> we should try to keep it. Well, I think what we can do, option number three, whatever, is cut this right here. Cut this off. Why, the bottom's awesome too, with the little, the way. I know, but we'd have to make a whole new one, Charlie. A new, the new laminate. Yeah. Here's what I'm thinking. What if we cut this here, got rid of this, right. restored this as much as we can, and then down here on the count, actual countertop, we put a nice high rail here, say three inches, right. with some dividers in there for Micah, so that you can put bowls and plates and so forth. That's it, simplicity itself. Keep this upper half. Look, it's for the cabinets. Yeah. And then this yeah, is an open space, just in the middle here. Right. Uh, yeah. This guy, this sat behind here. Right. So that you could, you okay. could yeah. Okay. Your bottles okay. of wine didn't go flying everywhere. What's that? Your bottles of wine and whiskey didn't go flying everywhere. Yeah, yeah. well that's always a good thing. It is. Right. But we try to save all the little screws here. Yeah, look, it's beautiful the pieces. But now what I would do with this, clean it up, mm -hmm. soak it with Smith's, yeah. and paint it white. Good, beautiful. Yeah, because yeah. then it's bright in there. Yeah. We're trying to get rid of all this darkness, you know. This top shelf, <clears throat> when you screw it down into the cleats, it presses down right here and uh, keeps pressure. And then there's a little cleat here. So when the boat's heeled over to port, like this, the fridge can't move. And the rubber feet are let into little those detents. Little so, and then finally, the fascia is screwed in here. And we have cleats here, too, on both the top and bottom shelves that keep the fridge from shifting fore and aft. Great. So that should be... That's a brand new thing for us to have the refrigerator. Yep. It's getting close. It's getting there, close. There's the new stove. The new stove. Now, this is about two inches narrower than the old stove. Okay. Which we knew. Yeah. Because the next size up, remember, was too big. Too big, yeah. So we just have to put heavier cleats to come into this dimension here, which is, I don't know, 20, I think. Plus the ice chest. Yeah, let's face it. It's the drinks, I always have drinks. That. We're all the drinks. We're always going to have that. Please. I see. There you go. I refer to sailing as camping out in luxury. Yes, exactly. Camping out in some of those cramped luxury. Right? <laughs> cramp yeah, luxury. you don't have to put the tent up. So here's the other part of our uh, new system. I think it's uh, 34 quarts or something. That's a new measurement they use yeah. instead of saying cubic feet, you know what I mean? Well, it looks like it can hold about uh, six bottles of wine. Or... Oh, yeah. yeah. And again, mostly deep freeze. They're going to put, you know, frozen stuff in there and slowly pull from there. Or you know what I do when we go camping? This is a great idea, by the way. Okay. I make up days in advance a bunch of breakfast sandwiches, like on sourdough. Okay. A bunch of lunch sandwiches, like tuna or whatever your favorite is. Wrap them in tin oil and freeze them. Now, time to go sailing for four days, right? You know, the boat's lurching around and you're halfway across the channel and you want a sandwich. It's right in there. Yeah. And because they're frozen when you load them, they help this. Yeah, stay. You don't need yeah. to put much energy into it. Right. So you take them out and you want to heat that sandwich up. You leave it in the tin foil. Strap it to the muffler. Huh? In the microwave. Strap it to the muffler. <laughs> you have a microwave? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Well, you put it in the skillet, yeah. 
put the lid on the skillet yeah. and put the fire on tiny, 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 tiny. And it, that little tin foil becomes its own little oven. Oh, just leave it in the tin foil. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. And it's not sitting on a hot pan. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got the big clamps, right? Yeah, I got two bigs and two mediums. So if we go like this right here, see these openings? Yeah. And then put this one over here. We can just, two clamps will do it per, per door. You wanna do it just like that? Yeah, because um, what do you think? It's not gonna leak, is it? I'm no. just worried about uh, push down on this and there being a gap right there. Oh. Should we go like this? Will these fit? Mm. We could, but remember, we're not putting a lot of pressure on it. What's wrong? You look baffled. <laughs> I am baffled. Well, we'll have a little leakage out the nail hole, but we can clean that. Oh, yeah. Because nothing's going to be in the way. Okay. Get them out near the edge here. Property numbered A and B. I'm just going to do the edges, you get the feel. So. Sure all the surfaces are just, if nothing else, just damp in this case. Um, put the corners. You don't use that like thick white glue? No, no. <laughs> like big old Elmer's. wood glue? What, no. Elmer's? Oh, that What's stuff, glue? you wouldn't have time don't to use... get the clamps on. <laughs> See this, you got Super glue, no super glue? <laughs> no, no. Why not? This is super glue, it's just not very fast. Nice. These are pulverized cotton fibers, basically. Yeah. Okay. People are fascinated by this. I think there's a lot of dementia out there. <laughs> and I've always been interested in boats, really. Mm. Yeah, you can come and work. Yeah. Their inter your internships are opening up quick. <laughs> Doug's taking interns. Yeah, right. Well, you know, it's one of those trades that, let's face it, it's in the latter days. Yeah. We're, we are working, two T Rexes working on a Ronosaurus here. <laughs> yeah. He just called you a T Rex. Yeah. Hey, my arms aren't that small. <laughs> <laughs> You have the T-Rex syndrome. And you're sitting down. If your belly's out too big, you, your, your arms are here. It's T-Rex time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three-year party. We're going in. Oh, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so is that the right, is that so the right one? Right. Okay. It only goes in one way. Okay. A and B. Now we wipe this excess off. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Clint? Yeah. Just for... <laughs> Because Mr. Paper. Murphy loves boat shops. Let's put some wax paper on those blocks of wood. Was he saying Murphy was an optimistic sailor? Well, there is one of, one of the Carl R.A.'s of Murphy's Law is Murphy was an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just put it right on the wood. Okay. We're almost there. I lost after your table. <laughs> you know, getting it level was getting it straight. <laughs> Great workbench here. Everybody's commenting Doug's epic workbench. Let's take a look at it. It does not. It's a new segment, the workbench. Let's yeah. It, you know, it is pretty awesome. It is. It does not move. It's not moving. If that boat's still here a year from now, yeah. that episode will be called Doug's New Straight Jacket. <laughs> Doug takes his own life. Suicide of Ventura, film at 11. So, <clears throat> It's what are you hoping, big, big way, in the next couple of weeks? Finish up the galley, get the galley back together? In the next couple of weeks? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we want to get that 
the galley together because see then we can we can say the galley and those two little fascias in the stateroom yeah. which we'll start on tomorrow that way we can say okay from the bow to here we're pretty much done we're done yeah. then we go into the saloon which is a bunch of little sticks you saw those supports for the seats yeah oh track that and the other fridge a little storage bin over here outboard of the fridge countertop move that little bulkhead over did we, did we show them that I thought Dave showed me that, but I don't know if you guys saw it. Yeah. yeah. Move it over about four inches. Yes, and Clint yeah, showed that showed to me. Okay, that's a yeah, mile, yeah. four inches. Yeah. So but move that, that over. That little unit there that, that needs to move, that little wall, that little half wall, that's not structural or anything. It was just a little... It's just a, a wall to keep the engine noise out of the boat. Okay. That's why it was so thick, yeah. It wasn't... But we'll move it over. Yeah, inboard about, I think, four inches. Yeah. That way the fridge can drop in, come out this way a little bit, be more accessible. You know, still have a pretty good area out here for storage of stuff that you don't use very often. Why do you think it was so far away from the engine? Is it going to give less ventilation to the engine compartment? Well, all those filters there, I think the thinking was that it would be easier to change them, but they come straight out like this. So. Okay. You remember that fuel shutoff valve that was in that sloping shelf? Yes. We're removing that. Okay. So we're, we're it's, because the shelf is just loose around. And the valve is kind of like attached to this loose so, shelf. Are you so, have a but I mean, valve? oh yeah. Now, what about the um, the bulkhead, the laminate on the? We got to get, you, we got to order that material. Right. Uh, when you get home. Yeah, I will dig that. Text out. me the name of that stuff. Okay. Allegra something. Or Let's just get it. Okay. Need two sheets. Two sheets, yeah. Um, fifty bucks a sheet, I think. That ain't the big cost. No. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, the cheapest plywood you can buy is 50 bucks a sheet. But um, the, the fuel shutoff, John, was basically for changing the fuel filter. It was to keep air from right. backing up. Right, so you didn't have to the fuel system. So right. would you want to finish the, the galley first and then move to the bulkhead? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. Now we'll be doing other stuff, like for instance, those shelves I showed you that, is, that are go out board of the set to you. You know, we have the material for that. Right. We can cut those, because what happens? You cut them, then you have to smith them, then you have to prime them, then you have to paint them, and then you can put them in. So we'll, we'll be doing a lot of that stuff right away, knowing that you understand now that those are nothing but patterns. And the same with the galley cabinet. We'll just cut it right down there, about seven, eight inches off the bottom, and uh, bingo, bango, bungo.